This is ITV News at 10 with Tom Bradby. Good evening. Back in the day when the energy market was privatised, customers were told, of course, that competition between rival suppliers would force down prices. But that was then. Now, for more than three million British gas customers, it doesn't seem to have turned out quite like that. The company, still the biggest supplier 20 years on, with profits of a third of a billion pounds, is putting up the price of its electricity by 12%. To be fair, it is British Gas's first price increase for a while, but that hasn't only upset its customers. The government is trying to reduce Britain's carbon footprint, making electricity production cleaner. So it's out with coal and in with renewables. But today, British Gas blamed the cost of this transition for its decision to increase electricity bills. The boss of Centrica, which owns British Gas, is pointing the finger at government policy. The government is having none of it. Every political party in Britain believes your company is profiteering. You have a problem, don't you? We've held off with our price freeze in order to benefit our customers as long as possible. But we can absolutely justify these increases. The price rise is controversial because the market price of gas and electricity has been falling. But British Gas argues that the wholesale energy costs make up only 34% of the final household bill. Distribution costs, the costs of delivering gas and electricity to homes, are as significant. And the government's environmental and social policies now make up at least 12% of final bills. And it is these costs that British Gas says have gone up significantly in recent months. The company's average dual fuel bill is rising to £1,120 a year to compensate. Some of British Gas's customers have had enough. It's high summer, so the Irapi family's energy consumption is low. Thanks, Mum. But from September, the company's price rise will bite. 12.5% just in time for winter. It's just not fair. And I certainly won't be staying with British Gas. I've been with them for quite a few years. Um, always seem pretty decent, but... This time, no. British Gas is Britain's biggest energy supplier and by far, but the company's lost almost 200,000 customers to its rivals in the last six months and higher bills could trigger more defections. Consumer groups say the average British Gas customer on a standard variable tariff could save well over £200 a year by switching. Does that seem right to you? If customers want to go to a very small supplier and the one that has does not have the obligation to pay for the government costs. But they could does, save that money. They, they could, could save, save that money. Well over £200. They pounds could save more. that money at this present time. The power to switch energy supplier is in your hands. The savings available to those who switch energy supplier have been widely advertised and yet many consumers stay put. British Gas argues it's because they're happy. Others see it as proof that the market is broken and needs fixing. Joel Hills, News at 10. So what is this all about, really? Was it inevitable? Do we just have to lump it? Or is it, as Joel was asking just a moment ago, some kind of profiteering? Well, some of the blame for today's rise has been laid at the door of the regulator Ofgem. The government said it needs to get on with things. But what happened to that election campaign promise of the Prime Minister to cap energy price rises? In the 80s, we were told privatisation was the future. Are you, Sid? Yes. Oh, boy, have I got a message for you. Encouraged to buy shares in industries like British Gas, we were also told a competitive market would keep prices low. Nearly 30 years on, you could argue it isn't working. Are taxpayers now paying the price? Well, on the one hand, it has worked in that it secured new investment in an energy system that was chronically underinvested in throughout the decades of, uh, of public ownership. And it's also allowed new entrants to come into the market and supply energy. But the issue now is not about who owns the energy system, but what do we want it to do? And what should it do for consumers and for industry? More recently, politicians have argued an energy cap is the answer, limiting price hikes for 17 million people on standard variable rates. So potent is the issue at the moment, Theresa May made it front and centre of her election campaign. The government I lead will keep taxes low and cap rip-off energy tariffs to help families who are working all the hours they can to pay the bills. Along with her majority, though, the policy was wiped out. With no immediate plans to legislate, the government's passed the onus onto the regulator. It wants Ofgem to use its powers and has asked them to look at ways of protecting those on the worst tariffs. 
It says, in response, Ofgem has committed to taking prompt action to develop proposals, including a safeguard tariff. We want to see rapid progress on this commitment and are ruling nothing out. It was Labour who first touted an energy cap, and today they still insist government should have a much bigger role. We said first of all we'd have a price cap, but in addition to that we'd start developing public ownership of our energy supplies so we wouldn't be held over a barrel by the big energy companies in the way that we are at the moment. This is exploitation of customers as far as I can see. The simple fact is no one appears willing to take responsibility. Both the industry and the government are blaming each other for crippling charges. We now have to wait to see what Ofgem come up with. And if it's not tough enough, the government has promised to take further action. And then, of course, the next argument will be what that action is. Emily Morgan, News at 10 in Westminster. And Joel uh, is here. Well, Joel, as Emily was saying there, it feels like everyone's putting the ball back in the regulator's court. Lucky regulator.